Hey, what's going on everybody? Nem with Planet Destiny here, and welcome to the weekly reset of October 26th, 2021. And this is the final week of Festival of the Lost, so if uh, you are still missing some of the lore book pages um, for this year's event, you may want to start grinding those out. Um, now, of course, we have all of our pinnacle sources reset for the week, so if you are looking to power up for GMs or Master Vault of Glass, you have your Gambit, Vanguard, Strikes, and Crucible Pinnacle Sources reset. Of course, we also have uh, Vaults of Glass, and over in Europa, we have the Exo uh, Challenge Simulation Agility, and the Empire Hunt for this week is going to be the Warrior. So if you complete that one on Master, you can get a Pinnacle Drop. Um, now, of course, also in the Tower, you do have Prophecy, which will net you another Pinnacle. And over on the Tangled Shore, you'll have uh, the Exotic Quest Presage, which is going away soon. So if you uh, haven't gotten the chance to complete this particular mission yet for Dead Man's Tale, I highly suggest that you do so before it goes away. And finally, over on the EDZ, you also have Harbinger for your pinnacle drop. Now, as far as strikes go, let's take a look at our weekly modifier, which is going to be Solar Singe. And the daily modifiers for today is going to be Brawler and Hot Step. When defeated, when defeated challenging combatants drop fire at their location. As far as the Nightfall goes, this week we have the Corrupted, which is going to be a very very tough uh, Grandmaster. So if you're going for that for your Conqueror uh, title um, or the gilding of your uh, Conqueror title, best of luck with that. That is going to be an adventure and a half for you. <laughs> um, now, of course, we have our seasonal um, activity rotated as well. It's going to be the Forest of Echoes this week, which will also knit you uh, Pinnacle Gear after you defeat four champions in the activity. Now, uh, as far as Crucible goes, this week we have Clash as our uh, weekly rotator uh, game mode. Now you can complete either three matches of Clash, Control, Rumble, or Elimination in order to get your hot and spicy Pinnacle drop. Now, finally, um, let's go ahead and take a quick look at Eververse and see what's going on with uh, Tess this time around. Step on up. Take a look. Now, as far as our weekly offerings go, we have the Prankster Dance, which is basically the dance from IT, which is like. terrifying. <laughs> um, the ship that I am not going to pretend I know how to pronounce, so I'm just going to call it the Moth Ship. The Skitter Scare, which this was actually for Brightest last week. So if you didn't pick it up then for Brightest, you still can pick it up for Silver. And, uh, the Pumpkin Dance, Looking for anything. which was also available for uh, for uh, Brightest last week, which is an incredible emo, and I did pick that one up. And the Gladiator's Blade Rush. As far as Brightest go, we have the Calavera Shell. For 2,800 bright dust, that seems a little, little expensive, and the halted oblivion sparrow, which is actually really cool. Really, really neat sparrow. I don't know if I actually own this one. I might have to pick that one up. Uh, the bat wing entrance for 450 bright dust. Check out how cool that looks. Bungie uh, bat wings when. And finally, the Archeo Skin Shader for uh, your collection purposes, because ooh, that is that is a color. Now, of course, in the other uh, brightest section, we have the Gort Summoner. <laughs> it's cute. The Necromance Dance, Spooky Dance. We'll definitely be picking that one up. The Fettered Shell. By the way, if uh, if y'all really want to blind someone for this one, if you do have the shader uh, Gambit uh, Jade Stone, uh, warning for your eyeballs, because this is going to be bright AF. Uh, 
if you want an irradiated ghost shell, there, there, there you go. Holy sheesh. <laughs> Holy sheesh. Um, the Winchester's Ruin, one of the uh, original exotic sparrows that came with uh, Festival of the Lost quite a while ago. Uh, one of my personal favorites. It looks really, really good. Um, the Penguin Mask, if uh, you want to look like a mailbox. And the Pride Glass Weapon Ornament for the Fighting Lion with the Winged Nightmare Projection. As far as shaders go, we have the Midnight Talons, which is a classic, uh, classic shader. Uh, smashing success, a little bit of Joker vibes there, safety first, and another uh, shader that I'm not going to pretend I know how to pronounce. Uh, and finally, we have the Warsaw, Warsaw, Warsat arrival, the Arachnophile, and the reanimated entrance. And that is our Eververse offerings for this week. Let's go ahead and take a quick peek over at our uh, buddy, the Gunsmith, to see what he has in store for us. So as far as weapons goes, we have the Toil and Trouble with uh, Smooth Bore, Small Bore, Appended Extended Mag, Slide Shot, Moving Target, and a Range Masterwork, which is not a bad roll for this shotgun. Uh, the Lonesome Sidearm, one of my favorite sidearms of all time with extended barrel, fantastic, small bore, pretty great, extended mag, alloy magazine, full auto, trigger, demolitionist, and a range masterwork. If you haven't tried out this sidearm or if you missed out on it when it was in the world drop, pick this up this is a fantastic sidearm both for pvp and pve uh, one of the benefits that it has for pvp is the full auto system trigger um, and the range uh, master work that it has on it it is insane people do not really expect the range that this little thing can have and it packs a punch um, the demolitionist part of it is actually really good for pve so this is a must buy uh, the icolos sniper rifle with a chambered compensator Full bore for range, accurized rounds, steady rounds for stability, triple tap, and boxed breathing. You know, at one point in time, this would have been a really solid roll for us uh, for this sniper rifle for uh, damage um, with uh, triple tap and boxed breathing. It basically, it's kind of like a baby whisper of the worm um, in terms of how it functions. But um, snipers haven't really been meta in PVE um, in quite some time. If you want to pick this up just in case, by all means. But um, it's not, not a bad roll for PvE. Uh, the number auto rifle with chamber compensator, course crew rifling, appended mag, armor piercing rounds, field prep, and sympathetic arsenal with a handling masterwork. This is a huge pass for me personally. The bad omens rocket launcher with auto loading holster and kill clip, uh, implosion rounds, alloy casing, counter mass, and hard launch with a blast radius. Uh, Masterwork, it's not bad, but again, the Ascendancy Seasonal Rocket Launcher is better. And finally, the Memory Interdict with uh, Countermass, Linear Compensator, Proximity Grenades, Sticky Grenades, Impulse Amplifier, and Disruption Break. This actually is not a bad roll for PvE. Uh, I would probably pick this up just to kind of have a decent uh, Void Grenade Launcher, uh, especially with, uh, with these two particular perks here. So, uh, yeah, that's actually kind of, uh, kind of nice. Um, but guardians, that's going to be it for me this week in terms of reset. Um, uh, don't forget that this is also again, the final week for festival of the lost. So if you haven't gotten your, um, your lore pages done, this is the week to do so. Uh, but with that being said, everybody, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you guys get some hot and spicy loot. If you're attempting that nutty grandmaster this week, which I believe is going to drop, I think either the hothead or the hung jury adept. So, uh, thank you for watching and we'll see you next time. Guardians.